Hi, I'm Rick from Marathon Models, RC specialist from the UK, established for over 40 years. Uh, here we have a new quadcopter, new to the UK market. This is the Auto Pathfinder CX20. Now, this quadcopter has actually already been available already throughout the year from other countries, uh, but this is it finally coming to the UK. Now, there are several different versions depending on what country you buy it in. So, all this setup video I'm about to do is actually all based on the UK version, which is the Zero UAV version. So this is what you'll get in your box with the UK version. You'll also get the CX-20 quadcopter itself. You get a full function radio. You get your undercarriage. You get a GoPro mount with an anti-vibration mount, which is actually quite a good thing. You get a full set of propellers. A 2700 milliamp 3 cell LiPo battery and a standard uh, 1 amp charger. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the undercarriage on. So, if you take the undercarriage out of the box and then these little clips here, just open that up. So, just flip the quadcopter over. Undercarriage, just simply falls into the slot and then the small thumb screws just quickly go on. Screw down and then the other one. Now when you're doing on the other side, the side that has the aerial, just watch out, there's a small cut out in the undercarriage leg so when the undercarriage goes on that cable isn't snagged by the leg so just make sure it goes in and it can kind of move freely just so that way you know you're not snagging it. Okay, so that's that in. Just flip that back over. Okay, the next job we're going to do is going to put the propellers on. Now, this is a little bit more critical, critical because two propellers go one way and two go the other. So it's very important you have the right ones on the right legs or the right arms. Now, you'll notice on the quadcopter you've got different coloured nuts here diagonally across. Now, these are to help you which what motors go what way. Now there is small marks on the legs themselves with a little arrow pointing in the rotation. Unfortunately the propellers don't actually have the same marker on. They're marked in for example A, B and so on. Now the propellers, uh, these are actually handed. So if you place them down, now they've got a big hole on the back, small hole on the front. So if you have them all facing with the small hole up, you'll actually see the blades on two of them slope one way and the blades on the other one. So if I hold that up, you'll see the way that the blades are actually cut. So you've got two going one way and two going the other. So I'll make it a little bit simple for you, is this one is the clockwise rotation and that is the A propeller. So the A propeller goes to the black nut. Now as I say, these, are, uh, these nuts are actually threaded. There's two, a right hand thread and two a left hand thread. So uh, normally you'd be unscrewing it this way, but actually in this one, you actually screw it the other way. So we just take that off, get the propeller. Now, the motor's notched, and so is the propeller. So when you put it on, if you get it wrong, it won't fit on. Just spin the propeller, and then you feel it, it can go down, and then you put the nut on, remembering it tightens down the other way on the black ones, and then just get your spanner out, and just give it a wee, you don't have to go mad, just give it a wee neck up. So that's that one on. So we'll now do a silver one. So that's the propeller from the other side. So the silver takes the B propeller because the little logo goes that way and this propeller turns that way. So we'll just take that one off. Again, put your prop on, line it up with the little flats and then put the nut back on like that. Tighten up, neck up there and that's your 
two back props on and then just do the same with the front. Okay, now that we've got all the propellers on, before we can really move on, we need to actually charge the battery. So, I'm just going to lay that to one side. And then we get out our battery and our charger. Now, this is all fairly straightforward. Obviously, the in the UK, we'll have a UK plug on that. So, basically, just plug that into the mains. And then you have a single green power light come on on the charger. Now this is a balanced charger, so rather than plugging in through the conventional main battery connection, it actually uses this little balance lead which goes into this socket here. So what it does is, inside one of these batteries, there's three individual cells. It will charge each individual cell on its own, so they all charge perfectly and balance. So we just basically plug that into the balance connection and then you will get a power charging indicator light. Now this is quite a slow charger and this is a reasonable size battery so expect the charge time to probably be about, I, I would probably budget for about two, two and a half hours. Now this is quite a standard LiPo battery so you could go to um, either our own website or your local model shop um, and pick up a, a faster LiPo charger. You can buy them anything from sort of 30 to 45 pounds depending on how good a charger you want and they would also be ECDC so you would have the option of charging off the mains or from a car battery if you were out and about which would be very handy of course picking up additional batteries um, would be probably quite a good idea as well okay the next step we're going to do before we move on while the battery is charging we're going to calibrate the transmitter now the transmitter as it comes out of the box it does have this warning sheet on it basically it's referring to calibrating the model before you take off for the first time but um, as we're going to be calibrating the radio we're just going to take this off and then we'll come back to it so first thing to do obviously you need to put some batteries in the transmitter so four double a's in the back there and then just put the cover back on. These are not supplied so you need to pick them up. Use good quality ones though. Now to calibrate the transmitter it is actually quite easy. All you basically have to do is the SWB switch if you just flick that down and then the trimmer on the uh, flying control, the trimmer, pull that up or push it up and then just switch the transmitter on and then you'll see all the light lighting indicators come on and that's in calibration mode and it's just a simple case of both sticks to the middle and then just start moving them around in a circular motion like this go around two or three times and then put that one back to center and then flick that switch off you hear it bleeping and then a single long tone at the end and that is the transmitter calibrated simple as we're now going to calibrate the internal compass on the CX-20. Now, as I'm doing this indoors, I have removed the props. But when you do this, you must do this outdoors and away from any kind of electromagnetic interference. So not doing it inside a building or next to a car or anywhere that could give it interference. So you would normally have the props on because you would be about to fly. So to do the calibration, all we simply do is plug the battery in. Now within five seconds of plugging the battery in, switch on your controller and that binds the two together. Now simply to calibrate it, we can calibrate it immediately and what you do is you rotate it eight times in an anti-clockwise direction. So you go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then to finish the calibration, you simply toggle the SWA switch down to position once four times. And if you keep an eye on this flashing light here, you'll get a simultaneously dual colored LED inside. So you go one, two, three, four, and then dual color LED, and that's it now calibrated, and you're good to fly. Now, as it is, is, just now, because we're indoors obviously, we haven't got a full GPS lock and uh, the motors are also locked as well. So we're basically safe to uh, wait for a continuous green LED which shows us a full satellite lock. 
I'm going to show you how to arm and disarm or lock and unlock the CX20 motors. Now, once you get it all turned on, you'll have two flashing lights. Now, as we're indoors, we have a flashing green light, which means we've got less than six satellites. You should never take off with less than six satellites. But when that goes to a constant green light, you're good to go. Now, on the other side, it is red, which shows that the motors are locked. So if we were to try and throttle up the motor, as you can see, nothing's going to happen. Now, to unlock the motors to prep for flying, all you do is you just hold it to the, the throttle stick cross to the left hand side and hold for several seconds and if you keep an eye on the red flashing light that will go to a solid red flashing light when the motor's unlocked. So that's the motor's now unlocked. So if I open the throttle the motors will actually now run. And then when we want to land and we pull the throttle stick back you can do one of two things. You can either pull the stick back and then after about five seconds the motor will lock themselves or pull the stick to the left side, hold, and then the motors are now locked and you can move the throttle and there's no problem. You should always lock your motors before you approach your model because simply by bumping the throttle open the motors will open up. So very good idea to always lock your motors when you're done. Now that you know how to take off and land your CX-20, I'm now going to show you about the different flight modes. Now, what flight modes are, uh, these are basically like the stability program uh, when you're actually flying, is how stable will be. Um, for example, a more advanced pilot wouldn't want so much stability on the model, where somebody who'd be a beginner kind of wants a sort of hands-off sort of flying mode. So, now, if I just move this to the side, I'm going to show you the transmitter. Now, if I turn the transmitter on, I think we're to go beep. Now, these are the flight mode switches. So the first one we're going to look at, actually, is going to be the flight mode switch A on this side. So if we just ignore this one just now, this is a secondary switch. So with both switches up, this is off, and zero would be full manual mode. Now, Unless you know what you're doing, I would not fly in manual mode. This is like a high performance supercar with the traction control turned off. Unless you really know what you're gonna do, you will crash because it has no stability program at all. Now the next switch down, as you see in manual mode, the LED, indica LED indicator here is red. So if we go one down, it goes to or blue purple color. Now this is the um, probably the most popular mode. This is positioning mode as it's called or GPS mode is on some other quadcopters. So this will be the, uh, the the model would be flying itself. So it would be holding its height, it would be holding its position so you could have your hands off and it would just simply hover there. Now when obviously you're flying uh, you would have the throttle in the middle. So when the throttle's in the middle, you'll hear that beeping noise. That's telling you the throttle is in the middle and it will be holding its height. Now the next switch down to position two, um, I'm just gonna move that off there just to stop the beeping noise. Uh, in position two, this is actually the one key return home. So if you've got quite far away from yourself, you've got a bit disor disorientated and you just wanna bring the model home, Flick that switch down and the model will rise, either if it's below 15 metres it will rise up to 15 metres. If it's above 15 metres it will simply start heading home to where it started. And once it gets to where it started it will just simply uh, lower itself to the ground uh, and land and switch off the motors. If you want to interrupt it halfway back just simply just switch back to position hold mode. Now, coming over to the other side, this activates um, other uh, features of the switch. So if you're unsure, just leave this one off and just use the ones that I've uh, told you about. So the next part here would be activating. So you'd be in position hold mode. Now, so that would give you a full stability program. Flicking this down one, this now takes you into what they call non-nose mode or what is commonly known as, known as orientation control. What this means is when you traditionally fly, if I turn the model round so the model is facing the same way as the transmitter, it's all quite straightforward. If you push the stick forward, the model would go forward, pull the stick back, back it would come, and if you do like that, it would bank that way, bank that way, almost as if you were sitting in the car. Now, if the model was facing, say, the other, say sideways, 
then basically your controls are not the same. So pushing the stick away from you would actually be making the model go sideways and pulling the stick back, it would go that way. Or if it was pointing towards you, the uh, flying controls are as per as if you were sitting in the model. So you, know, you would have left would be right, right would be left. So when you flick into orientation control or non-nose mode as they call it, regardless of the position of the model, Forward is still forward away from you, back is still back the way, and left this way. So it takes away regardless what way the model is spinning. And while you're doing that, if you want, the yaw control or the turn control, which is this one, which is what rotates the model, you can actually still rotate it, and this still applies, where that is still away, that is still back towards yourself. So that is the non-nose mode or orientation control. And then the last mode, coming one down to position two, you know, it's LED indicators now changed again. Uh, what this is, is this is a height setting mode. So what it does, it will retain its height, but give you full flying control over it. It won't have this sort of position lock that it would have in the position hold mode. So for example, if it was windy, the model would, it would keep its height, but it would drift away with the wind. Whereas if it was in position hold, then obviously it would hold its position. So, so if they sound a little bit complicated, as I said, just fly in that mode, purple light on, which is position hold. Well, I hope you found this video in setting up your CX-20 helpful. Just one thing before I wrap up, it's just to do a small mistake in the instructions. On this tape in regards to calibrating the compass, this is when you rotate the model eight times, then toggle the SWA switch uh, four times to lock in the information. On this little tape, it actually tells you SWB switch, which is incorrect. It is actually the SWA, which is what I tell you to do in the video. And then lastly, just to finish off, before you go out and fly your model, do think about where you fly it. These are not toys. They are like lethal instruments in the wrong hand. So always make sure you find a nice wide open space. Do a risk assessment first. You should always be 50 meters away for any person or building. And obviously look out for things like mobile phone transmitters, power lines, power station, anything that can give off an electromagnetic interference. Because these are the sort of things that can confuse the, the GPS and the flight controller. And that's when a lot of people run into problems with models flying over or flying off. And as I was saying in the video, always wait till you've got your maximum satellite. So that's six plus. So the green LED on the back is in a constant green light. Never take off if it's still flashing. This does mean that it is under six satellites, which means it's not got a good satellite lock, which means in the event of a failsafe, it may not fly home or it may be unstable. And then one other thing, the low battery warning is actually from the main flight indicator. So when you're flying, you've got red and green lights on the bottom. When your power is low, these will actually start flashing. When they flash, you've got about two or three minutes of basically flying left before it will go into auto land. So always a good idea to uh, quickly fly back. Okay, so thanks for watching. My name was Rick from Marinfo Models, uh, RC specialist from the UK for over 40 years. Uh, have a look at my other YouTube videos. If you like them, give them a thumbs up, share them with your friends, and uh, thank you very much. Bye.